So one tip that you can, uh, if you if you're let's say you're you're doing a PhD thesis, which is an enormous job, or you're writing a book, and you got uh, fifteen minutes between now and a meeting that you have. I mean, how how could you possibly make progress on your book in 15 minutes? Well, of course you can make progress on your book in 15 minutes because there's always a reference you want to look up, a figure you want to draw, an example you want to uh, uh, flesh out. So too often people waste too many small snippets of time uh, to uh, uh, because they don't they haven't thought about how can I use that time productively. And this was before social media and smartphone, Al. So, what, what is that? This was what you just said right now was before social media and smartphones and all the distractions oh, yeah. that we oh, have yeah. right now. So. I, I, Right now, nowadays, with social media and iPhone and, and TikTok and all the things, you know, get the 15-minute snippet of time and go find a reference instead of browsing TikTok demands, it, you know, like a very bra- a very strong personality. Yeah, and this is one of the messages in Alan Lakin's book. It's, is um, to make good use of these small snippets of time. And, uh, you know, when somebody asks me, how in the world could I possibly write a book that's just so monumental a task? My answer has has always been, on any given day, I'm not writing a book, I'm working on a chapter. And actually I'm not working on the chapter, I'm working on a section. And actually I'm not working on that section, I'm working on a- Subsection. Yeah, a subsection or an example. Uh, because if you think about the project of the whole book, uh, that can be very depressing. How in the world could I possibly get there? It's one step at a time. Let me and give let, you, you just let, let me yes. mention it. There, there's a documentary that I mentioned to all of my students, and this had to do with two mountain climbers. And one of them uh, had fallen down a crevasse. His climbing partner had to cut him loose. uh, And this guy, everybody thought he was dead. And he had decided, he had two broken legs. He decided he was going to crawl the three miles back to the base camp. And in the documentary, what said is, um, how in the world could you keep yourself motivated to crawl three miles with two broken legs. And he said, I couldn't. All I could do is motivate myself that my goal is to get to that rock. And then when I got to that rock, my goal was to get to the next rock. And that documentary, uh, uh, Touching the Void, I think was the title of it, something like that. This is great. I, with, with your permission, I would like to end with some ancient Jewish wisdom. Before I got married, I was terrified. And I asked my friend, which was an ultra-Orthodox, and said, listen, you know, marriage is, is, is for a lifetime. This is a strong commitment. How, how can you reconcile this? I said, <laughs> no, this is not for lifetime. This is just for today. And for to- and tomorrow, this is going to be just for tomorrow. And you keep going like this. And I think oh. this exact same ancient Jewish wisdom is correlated with what you just said. Al Oppenheim, thank you so much for your time, your effort, your energy, your wisdom, and your insights. It's, I need to think a lot right now. Thank you so much for your time. Well, and thank you for uh, the discussion. Very uh, I learned a lot from uh, all that you said, and uh, this was a tremendous amount of fun. So thank you very much. For-